Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan. Today we're going to be replacing the brake light switch for a 2005 Kia Sportage. This is a pretty simple and straightforward repair that literally anybody could do in a garage type situation. Heck, even on the side of the road, it is very, very approachable and a great way to save some money. So, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I have somebody pushing the brake pedal and we can see that the brakes are completely not working. So uh, that switch, the brake pedal switch is bad. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do before we do any kind of repair on this vehicle is disconnect our negative battery terminal using a 10 millimeter socket or wrench. If you're using a wrench, like I am, make sure you don't connect the two by accident because um, it will heat up and sparks will fly and you have a potential blowing up the battery. So just be careful if you're using a wrench like me. Or long enough wrench, I should say. We can just store this negative battery terminal lead down and away so it doesn't accidentally touch while we're working. Now the electrics to the vehicle are dead and we can continue. So here's where we're gonna be working today. Uh, we're gonna be removing this uh, kick panel here uh, just because it's gonna give us way more access to where we need to work, which is right up here. You could probably do it without removing this kick panel, but for filming purposes, it is going to be a whole heck of a lot easier if we just take this plastic piece off. So in order to remove this kick panel, we have to remove this Phillips head screw, that Phillips head screw, and that Phillips head screw. This is an aftermarket alarm or something. It's also held in with Phillips head screws, so we just gotta remove all these. Okay. This aftermarket alarm. And I wanted to point out as well, uh, I'm going to do my best to film this as best I can, but uh, please bear with me as it is pretty awkward to work under a dash with a big camera in your way. So the rest of the panel is held in with um, body clips that need to come basically straight this way. And a tool I really like for that is this, it's a body clip puller. They're very inexpensive. You can get them pretty much everywhere. And the maneuver is just basically uh, jimmying your way around this panel. And you could also use a uh, standard screwdriver. I just happen to like this tool. It seems to work really well for me. And you wanna be gentle but firm because you don't want to snap anything irreparably. So the whole panel just kind of comes uh, toward you and you're not really going to be able to remove it unless you remove your hood release down here. What we can do is just leave it on the ground and then we don't have to worry about taking the hood release out. So there you go. So I'm going to go with the camera and show you what we're going to be working with. And it's right here. And what you need to do is unplug it first by pushing on this safety and working the connector out. That's the safety at the end of my fingertip. It's a little tough to do with the, holding a camera and trying to do it one-handed. So uh, once this is out, I can more easily show you what I've done here. And you want to grab a 17 millimeter wrench to undo this nut up here. It's not on super tight. And then we can spin it uh, with the connector unplugged out of its home. And then we can compare it to our new unit. So uh, let me get this out and I can go over a little more in depth how I did that because I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this just because the positioning is so awkward. So here's the unit out. It wasn't that bad to get out of there. It was just really impossible to film. So the deal is that it's held in like this on a plate and then the brake armature sits like this. When you push on the brakes, this uh, plunger here extends out and a circuit is complete in here which tells your brakes to, you know, turn on as far as the lights go which is important to not get rear-ended, which is a big deal. And it's also very illegal to drive without brake lights uh, for good reason. So when you're fishing it out, basically what holds it in place are these two uh, nuts working against each other to sandwich it like this, as well as uh, do your adjustments. So when the brake pedal is at a normal position, your foot's not on it, you want this to be fully uh, pressed into its housing. That way when you let off the brakes, this plunger extends, the connection, or the circuit's completed, and your brake lights turn on. Um, so when I was down there underneath the dash, all I did was I got my 17 millimeter wrench, loosened this up like this, and then uh, used that same wrench to loosen this down a little bit. And then I just used my, it's not on very tight, I used my finger to just do that, and I removed it, and it just fell out. Um, but the first thing I did was I removed the electrical connector off of here. That was really easy, just a little safety, and you just walk it off and it's off. So. Really simple and straightforward removal. Actually one of the easier ones, which is cool. 
And here's our replacement part. It is a Duralast JA4371. Uh, these are everywhere. They are made for lots of different vehicles. This goes on a lot of different vehicles. Um, and we can compare our units here to make sure the plugs are the same and they are identical. The plungers are the same and they are the same overall size. See, this is why the adjusters are there. Um, because if this was going on a different vehicle and the adjuster length was different, you could change that by uh, moving the nuts up and down. So hopefully this fits, and it does. So we can see that uh, our new unit comes with a different size nut on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, put the stock ones on because they're a little bigger, a little easier to work with. So we can put that at its maximum adjustment, and then this one, uh, actually, but when we go to put it on, we don't put this one on, we fish this into its home, and then put this on like this, and then we can uh, set the adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you the end result, uh, again, because it's very, very cumbersome to film underneath the dash. Um, so I hope you forgive me on that. This part is available everywhere. I just walked into my local AutoZone and picked one up for like $11. Uh, if you really wanted to, you could get the Hyundai or Kia branded one. Um, but honestly, this was going to work just fine and it was like 11 bucks. So links down below in the description to this. So I wanted to show my setup on how I got that uh, sensor back in. Basically, I'm using this prop bar here to push the brake pedal as far forward as I can get it. Um, because that armature right there was a little too close for me to put the sensor in. And I also wanted to point out that the sensor only goes in one way. It's uh, the threads are cut in a certain way on one side, kind of like a D shape. Um, so it only goes in this way. That was a little confusing being underneath there. And then I also used a pair of very long needle nose pliers to hold on to the unit while I was putting that nut on. Otherwise there was no hope and heck due to my inability to have two hands under here at once. So now I'm going to go ahead, set the adjustment, release the prop and uh, set the adjustment. And you just wanna make sure that your adjustment is set so that way when you start pushing on the brake, the plunger extends, completes the circuit and your brake lights turn on. And of course, do not forget to plug it in. Uh, and then we can just put the kick panel back on. All right, now we can replace our kick panel. So the opposite of the way we put this thing on was we pulled straight out, so we gotta push straight back once all the clips are lined up on their uh, homes, just like that. Perfect. Those are very reassuring noises. I have my drill on a very low setting, by the way. There we go. We go around and make sure this is all nice in its home and it looks great. Alrighty, now we can reconnect our negative battery terminal cable. And when we're doing that, we want to touch the cable or the end to the terminal to make sure we don't get any kind of huge sparks. Because if you get enormous sparks, you want to be able to take the battery lead off of it very easily. And if you're using a 10 millimeter wrench like I am, make sure you don't bridge the gap between the negative and positive uh, terminals. Or you could use a, a socket, just as good. Now before we take this thing on the road, let's go ahead and check the rear to make sure that the brake lights are coming on. All right, so we can go ahead and check regular brake light. So all three of our regular brake lights are working. What I like to do too is turn on our running lamps all I have to do is turn the headlights on and then push the brakes to make sure that they get even brighter when uh, you push on the brake pedal because sometimes if you have the bulb in backward, it'll be the other way around, which isn't correct. The way I have it here is correct. So that is how to replace your brake light switch for a 2005 Kia Sportage. Now I wanted to go over, before I close out this video, about how much money you're gonna be saving. So I said in the video this part's available at AutoZone for like $12, and that's true, but you can find it on Amazon for $8.65. So that's how much the part cost for you is going to be. Now, if you took that to like a mom and pop shop, like a regular mechanic down the street, he's probably gonna charge you at least 30 bucks for the replacement part because he's probably gonna put in the Kia branded one, which is a little bit more, and then they're gonna put an additional fee on top. I, I'm willing to wager they'd probably charge you about $30 for that part, maybe less, but for the devil's advocate's sake, we'll say it's $30. 
and they're actually allowed to charge you 0.4 hours work to put that switch in um, and that's going to vary per hour how much uh, they can charge shop to shop. It's anywhere from like $80 to $100 an hour. So if it's $100 an hour, the math's pretty simple. They're going to charge you $40 to put that uh, little switch in, which brings your total up to $70. So $8, $70, it's about 10 times the cost uh, to take it to a mechanic and really the work's not that difficult. And if you're worried, if you're wondering about a dealer, you can just go ahead and double what the mechanic's gonna charge you. So the mechanic, the dealer's probably gonna charge you 100 bucks to 140 bucks, uh, depending on uh, the qualities of that dealership. So doing the work yourself saves you an absolute huge order of magnitude amount of money uh, especially over the lifetime of your vehicle and this is a really simple repair that literally anybody could do with one wrench and a screwdriver. Thank you so very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe down below if you like what I do. Go ahead and consider clicking that join button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you again for so much for watching and I'll see you next time.